Welcome to Montana This Morning. The time is six o'clock on this Wednesday, day after election day. I'm Victoria Hill. Ed's here. We survived. We did. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about with the elections, yes. but there's also a lot to talk about with the weather as well. So we'll start with the first interstate eye cam because our storm system is still arriving, but it looks like it's slowing things down quite a bit. And we'll tell you how that'll affect your weekend and beyond. 55 for a very mild start after being close to a record high in Billings. We did set records yesterday in uh, Livingston, Miles City, and especially Sheridan, Wyoming, where we hit 81. 74 yesterday in Billings was just two degrees shy of the record for the date. And you can see now that sunrise happens just before 7 a.m. and sunset just before 5 p.m. Temperatures regionally are into the 30s and 40s in western Montana. Winds and showers, especially north of, uh, of Missoula this morning, that's going to persist the next couple of days. But the rest of the region, well, we have those warmer temperatures through the midsection of the state. Much as we've talked about the last few days, that's also the result of some stronger winds and a little increase in the clouds as well. Very strong winds. You can see those shaded areas there to the west and north of Great Falls. We have a high wind warning for that area today if you happen to be traveling that direction. Temperatures are into the 50s and 40s across much of southern Montana. How about Clark, Wyoming sitting at 65 degrees, 64 in Cody this morning. Contrast that with the low 30s in Gray Bull and Basin. Again, where the winds are blowing, it's warmer and then into the lower elevations, it stays chillier. Temperatures will warm Warm up likely hitting the low 70s in the Billings area by later in the afternoon. And today we're trying to use our common sense. And sometimes it's absent for many people. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those things you think back on and you think, oh, if I would have just mm -hmm. gone with my gut reaction. I mean, that's yeah. what it usually comes down to. Right, yeah. Or, or you realize something could have been done easier a different way. And yeah. you just remember it for next time. That's what I tell myself every time my common sense seems to slip <laughs> little bit because it happens occasionally. <laughs> that's the, yeah, I think that's one of the things that, why we ask people that have done things a lot of times because they've already messed it up all the ways that they could. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, Ed, well, uh, enough about the common sense. Let's get on to some uh, solid uh, election results that came up overnight. Okay, thanks. thanks. Well, the race for the White House is still going. There are still key states counting votes this morning for President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. One of those battleground states is Pennsylvania. We have a live look right now, ballot counting underway there. And Wisconsin is still counting votes as well and hopes to have a result sometime this morning. CBS's Skylar Henry brings us the latest. President Trump tried to declare victory overnight at the White House. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. CBS News has not projected a winner in the race for president with a number of states still counting ballots and neither candidate having the 270 electoral votes needed. We want all voting to stop. We don't want them to find any ballots at 4 o'clock in the morning. President Trump said he's ready to go to court to challenge the results. The Biden campaign called the president's remarks a, quote, naked effort to take away the democratic rights of American citizens. I'm here to tell you tonight, we believe we're on track to win this election. Former Vice President Joe Biden addressed his supporters in Delaware just after midnight this morning. We knew because of the unprecedented early vote and the mail-in vote, that's going to take a while. We're going to have to be patient. And it ain't over till every vote is counted. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, a record number of Americans voted early and by mail. It's taking longer to count those votes in states like Michigan, which hopes to have its results later today. Maybe beyond tomorrow morning uh, before we actually get the vote count. And Pennsylvania, where it could be days before there's an official result. What's most important that we is that we have accurate results and that every vote is counted. CBS News projects the president held Biden off in Texas, Iowa, and Florida, while Biden held on to Minnesota. Georgia has yet to be called, partly because a waterline break at State Farm Arena delayed counting absentee ballots. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Here in Montana, we were flooded by a red wave as the top Republican candidates sweep the 2020 election. Your next governor is Greg Gianforte. He beat Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney by more than 10% of the votes. Gianforte called his victory a loud message to Helena that it's time to do things another way. MTN's Gabby Kravitz has more from Montana's first Republican governor in 16 years. 
Gianforte's campaign said they started Election Day confident, and they rode that momentum until the race was called, making Greg Gianforte Montana's next governor. There was plenty to celebrate at the Gianforte Danes election night party, beginning with Republican Greg Gianforte declaring victory just after 11 p.m. on election night. Folks, tonight you sent a loud message to Helena. A message to the state capitol from every corner of this great state. That after 16 long years of single party rule in the governor's office, it's time for Helen to change the way they do business. Around 1 a.m. on Wednesday morning, Gianforte was leading Cooney by around 45,000 votes, with 41% of precincts reporting. I want to thank all Montanans, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents who came together and voted to get our economy going again and to create more good-paying jobs. A spokesperson with Gianforte's campaign said high voter turnout in Yellowstone County would be in their favor. At last check early Wednesday morning, Yellowstone County was showing Gianforte was leading by 15,000 votes, a considerable lead for the Republican. Folks, Montana's best days are ahead of us. Thank you so much. God bless you and God bless Montana. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Krevitt, MTN News. Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney congratulated Gianforte and promised a smooth transition between the current administration and the new one. He said, tonight ends a historic election in Montana. It was the most expensive race for governor ever, but I still believe that people, Montanans, and our ideas, our responsibility, and our accountability are what govern us, not millionaires, not big corporations, not special interests. And it's six more years for Republican Steve Daines in the U.S. Senate he took down Governor Steve Bullock in the most expensive race in the history of Montana. With Dane's win, it looks like Republicans will also maintain the majority in the U.S. Senate. Q2's Casey Conlin is in Bozeman and has more on Senator Steve Dane's victory in the most expensive Senate race in Montana history. Maybe the biggest domino of the red wave in Montana fell in Bozeman as Republican Steve Daines retains his U.S. Senate seat after a strong challenge from Democratic Governor Steve Bullock. Though in the end, it will be a bigger margin than many people expected when all the votes are counted, probably six or seven percent for Danes. Really, the last domino to fall was when Flathead County's numbers came in about 11.30 p.m. Danes had taken a short lead over Bullock. Bullock's last chance was to have a surprising victory in a normally Republican county. It did not come as Flathead continued Republican and Danes increased his margin and eventually the race was called at 11.49 p.m. He took the stage here at 11.58, so he even beat the midnight deadline as he accepted on November 3rd. I have three words. Thank you, Montana! <laughs> By winning this race tonight, we have saved the United States Senate from Chuck Schumer's majority! Danes concluded his speech with a nod to the pandemic, saying overcoming COVID-19 is still his number one challenge on both a medical level and economic level. And then it's time to get together and come together as Montanans and as Americans to work to address the challenges that we face, immediate challenges like combating COVID, to protect our communities, to protect our economy. And I'm going to continue to work with our new governor for solutions that ensure that our government is working for the people. So it's at least six more years in Washington for Steve Daines as he again retains his Senate seat. In Bozeman, Casey Conlin, MTN News. Governor Steve Bullock conceded late last night, saying congratulations to Senator Daines on his victory tonight. I'd also like to thank my staff and volunteers who have worked incredibly hard over the last almost nine months. Thank you to my family who encouraged me to run and have stood by me through it all. And thank you to the people of Montana who have put their trust in me over the last 12 years. In Montana's House race, Matt Rosendale defeated Democrat Kathleen Williams. Nationally, Democrats maintained their control 
control of the U.S. House. MTN's Megan Mannering followed the Rosendale campaign last night and caught up with Montana's next U.S. House rep. I'm Megan Mannering covering the final moments of Rosendale's campaign this election cycle. Montana's lone U.S. House seat now belongs to Republican candidate Matt Rosendale after he defeated Democratic candidate Kathleen Williams. Now that seat has belonged to Republicans since 1997, so you could say this is keeping with tradition. I spoke to Rosendale right after the race was called and he said he is excited, he is humbled, but more than anything, he's ready to get Get to work and at the top of his to-do list he'll be refining his agenda working with the president to deliver a covid package among many other things of course and his final remarks he said for those who voted for him and for those who didn't he's just ready to get to work for all montanans i'm going to work to represent the entire state and that's what i did in the legislature and that's what i've done as the, the uh, state auditor and i will continue to have an open door policy. And when there's a problem that needs someone to uh, resolve it, that I'm going to be there to listen and to find the best way forward for the uh, people across the state of Montana. I'm Megan Mannering for MTN News. In the race for Secretary of State, Republican Christy Jacobson dominated Democrat Bryce Bennett, and it looks like Elsie Arntzen will remain the leader of Montana schools. In the race for Superintendent of Public Instruction, she's holding a firm lead over Helena school teacher Melissa Romano. Another large margin of victory for Republicans in the state attorney general race, Austin Knudsen held off challenger Rafe Graybill. In Montana's state auditor race, Republican Troy Downing defeated Shane more show. Montana voters approved a plan to legalize recreational marijuana in the state by a significant margin. MTN's Jonathan Imbarian reports on how the changes could be implemented. Amid the other results of Tuesday's election, one of the biggest changes for Montana could be the decision to move forward with the legalization of marijuana. Voters backed a pair of initiatives to allow recreational marijuana sales. Leaders with New Approach Montana, the group that sponsored the measures, said it's a victory that belongs to Montanans. Over the last two years of this effort, we heard from thousands of Montanans who were demanding common sense marijuana policy for our state. Now, thanks to their effort and their votes, we have that. Initiative 190 sets up a legal framework for marijuana sales, including a 20% tax. Constitutional Initiative 118 allows the state to limit sales to those 21 and older. Supporters of legalization argued it would provide Montana an economic boost and much needed additional revenue. Opponents said legalized marijuana would bring health and safety concerns. I-190 would legalize having and using small amounts of marijuana as of January 1st. The provisions for commercial sales wouldn't take effect until at least next fall. New Approach says they expect the first legal sales around February 2022. This result is not going to be the last word on the marijuana issue in Montana. Steve Zabawa with the Wrong for Montana committee said, quote, Wrong for Montana will sue tomorrow and defeat this measure either at the District Court or Supreme Court of Montana. Either way, recreational marijuana in Montana is a pipe dream. And the Montana legislature could make adjustments of its own during next year's session. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Advocates say recreational marijuana measures also passed in Arizona, New Jersey, and South Dakota on Tuesday. Montana voters had previously backed two measures to allow and expand access to medical marijuana, but this was the first time they weighed in on recreational marijuana. Moving away now from the election and onto Crime Watch, we now know the name of the man shot and killed inside of a home on the 4100 block of King Avenue East over the weekend. 30 year old Waylon Bearground died at the hospital on Sunday. They believe he got into an altercation with someone he likely knew. So far, no arrests have been made and no charges have been filed in the crime. Police are also looking for information about the Sunday morning shooting that left a 27 year old Laurel man with serious injuries. He was found lying in the front yard of a home on the 200 block of Terry Avenue. No arrests have been made and anyone with information about the shooting is being asked to contact the Billings Police Department. Authorities are investigating a suspicious fire that destroyed a duplex on Billings West End. Firefighters believe an accelerant was poured in front of the home at 4233 Limber Lane. The flames started in the garage and spread through the building, causing half a million dollars in damages. No one was injured or inside the building when the fire started.
And now for the latest on the pandemic. Hospitalizations for coronavirus topped more than 50,000 patients yesterday. According to the COVID tracking project, the number of cases is rising sharply in the Midwest. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services actually puts the current caseload of hospitalized patients over 52,000. It's estimated that 70% of hospital beds are currently full, with COVID-19 accounting for just under 11% of hospitalizations. Here in Montana, there are 380 89 people in hospitals infected with COVID-19. Yesterday, more than 600 new cases were announced and the death toll climbed to 425. There are more than 11,000 active cases across Montana.